Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from the UK. Today is Sunday, I believe it's the 7th of April 2024. And I'm so glad you're joining me today to talk about some knitting, some yarn and just some general chat of what I've been up to. So, elephant in the room, um, I am wearing my latest finished object, which is my colourful linen quill yoke. That's just what we're going to call it. So, I had a whole bunch of different colours of Pearl Soho linen quill, which I really, really like. Um, I made my husband get them for me for Christmas. Um, and I was really undecided what to do about them. And... If you've been following, you know that even when I was like almost done with the sweater, I was still unsure about it because these yarns felt so special and I wanted to make the best possible project out of it. I'm not sure if I have, but it's done. Um, so what I did is I held the yarn double. Um, so I started with two very pink shades, then mixed one pink, I think the flamingo pink, with a more salmon color and then went from the salmon to a mustard and then to a bright yellow at the bottom. Um, and just for the numbers and increases, I used Tin Can Knits Strange Brew Sweater Pattern, which I've talked so many times about in the past. Um, I've made multiple of them, and spoiler alert, there will be more. Um, so it's, it's essentially a color work pattern, but of course you can just skip the color work and use it for the numbers. So that's what I've done with this sweater. And if you want to see, oh, do you want to see? The yarn I had left over, I was playing yarn chicken and I didn't really realize it, but because I made the bottom stripe, can I show this to you? I made the bottom stripe of my body a bit longer in order to have the correct sort of length. And then, after I finished the sleeves, this is how much I had left of... I mean, the salmon is alright, and I think I have more of this in stash from a different project. Probably a different dialogue number, but I could have managed. But this was the limiting factor. So what I did is, once I split for the sleeves, I think I knit this top bit, possibly part of this, um, for both sleeves, so I knit them concurrently and then weighed what I had left and divided it by two and then I was really freaking out because I thought I was happy to do this with a sort of three-quarter length sleeve but I was quite worried it was going to be really short but it turns out it's actually it's turned out pretty well I've used up my yarn very efficiently and it is done and you know what I think I was questioning the colors a lot and once the sleeves were on, so the sleeves sort of met, match the color progression, all of a sudden it feels like a cohesive garment and I washed and blocked this. Sorry, I'm just bouncing around. Um, I washed and blocked this and it feels so nice. It's just evened out beautifully and it's so comfortable. I'm just wearing this for the first time and I, I love it. Now I understand why people enjoy making garments out of this. Um, yeah, I want some more. I really, really like it. And I am also just glad to have it finished. Um, the other colors I have more of, um, I have the bright pink somewhere else. Um, didn't use very much of the very bright yellow. It's just these sort of middle colors, obviously, that I used the most of. Especially the yellow, because essentially it is used all the way through here and all the way from here. So of course, I had one skein each, um, I was going to run into difficulties, but we made it work. So, linen quill yoke is done, um, 400 grams of yarn out of stash, and I'm happy I don't have to look at this garment anymore, at least I don't have to knit on it anymore. Um, if you don't remember, I cast this on in January, I think, with three other garments, so this was the last one, and it felt, feels like it's been on the needles for a long time. So now it is done and I'm very very happy about that. Other than that I'm just going to very quickly show you some of my works in progress. I'm trying to keep this short a because I have never-ending tonsillitis. I'm not feeling too bad with it. It's just really uncomfortable and I've had it for about four weeks um, so I will try to not talk too much with it. Secondly, um, my son and husband are off with my husband's friend and his daughter on like a fun fair trip, 
which is great. Um, so I did want to check in and use the time, but I also want to do all the knitting. Um, so I have been working on my husband's sock. This yarn is from Das Mondschaf in Germany. This is one of the Breaking Bad club colorways, I believe, from last year or something. I got this for my birthday almost a year ago. And this is the I am the one who knocks colorway, which I love. We all love Breaking Bad in this house. I mean, my three-year-old doesn't because he's three, but he will. Um, what I'm doing is I am making plain vanilla socks for my husband. And as you can see, it is a sock. It's just a top-down sock, um, 68 stitches, 2.25 millimeter needles, um, short row heel, and this morning I got up at 5.50 to watch F1, which is mad, I know. Which is why also the day feels like it is never ending. Um, but I had turned the heel last night and I knit all of this this morning, so I'm quite happy with my progress considering especially how tired I was. Um, so this is sock number one and ideally, today's Sunday, I should get this first sock finished because then I can take the second one on my train to London on Tuesday. So we'll see if that happens, but number sock is underway. I'm not sure it's coming. It is very sort of neon bright, but it's coming across a bit pastel on screen. It is definitely saturated yellow. Uh, I mean, everything I'm wearing is very bright today as well, so camera can't cope, but it's very, very pretty. So that is my current sock project. Next up, um, all of these projects, you'll know if you've watched my last weekend's vlogs, if you didn't, these may be, may be new to you. Um, this is my Simon Show. This is a pattern by Twinset and Pearls, and I saw this a while ago and absolutely love, I don't know, just I think I saw a picture of someone wearing it, and I just think this fabric looks really, really cool. I really like it. It doesn't look like your typical knitted fabric, almost a bit like plaid maybe, I don't know. Something about it really tickled me, so I bought the pattern immediately and was planning to knit with it and knit it. And I also wanted to use this hand spun yarn. And this was not my intention, but these two things aligned and I decided to knit this out of my hand spun. So as you probably know, I have been really obsessed with spinning again recently. I have fallen back in love with it. To be fair, I don't think I ever fell out of love with it. I just didn't have time. Um, but yeah, what I'm trying to do this time around is work with my hand spun more rather than just spin and then have it for years. So I spun this recently, I also mentioned this on the podcast, this is fiber from Hilltop Cloud in Wales, I believe, yes. Um, this is a merino silk and camel blend, so it's very luxurious. And as you can tell, I spun it into a three ply, chain ply gradient. So it's quite thin, it's about a sport weight. And I am pairing it with this yarn. Today's topic of the podcast essentially is using old stash with hand spun. So this is the Fiberco Amble, which I used to make my peacock sweater a while ago. And I was so happy to have one skein left to make myself some really fancy socks but instead I decided to use it with this and I do think it's the perfect pairing this is an sort of recycled wool alpaca and nylon mix it's very luxurious and the combination of these two is amazing I am sort of short on yardage for both of these but I have weighed them and I'm weighing them throughout um, so it should be fine. And the other day when cleaning out, I found my leftovers for my sweater. So I now definitely have enough of this yarn and I am sure I have enough of this as well. So the Simon shawl is an interesting construction in that you start from a corner and increase and then eventually I will decrease again. But I thought it would just be your standard sort of increase, possibly go straight and then decrease, but it's actually it creates a sideways crescent shawl. So it's very subtle, but the increase rate changes throughout. 
and yeah it's pretty clever i like it and again i'm sort of um modifying it slightly because i am assuming my gauge is off i am using sport rather than fingering weight yarn um and i'm just sort of going along and measuring so once i hit um just over 50 grams of this i will start decreasing um and yeah i really really like it Sadly, so far you can't really see much of the gradient, um, but it will come, the gradient will happen at the moment, it looks pretty plain, but I do actually really like it, and this combination of fibers, it just feels so nice around my neck. Um, the pattern is a garter stitch slip stitch pattern, which is really fun, I haven't done anything like this before. In the beginning I was struggling a little bit because you sort of have to look at the pattern all the time. Um, but I made myself eventually just sort of learn to read my knitting and rely on my knitting rather than relying on a pattern all the time. Which, as you change the amounts of increases you do, is quite handy. So now I'm in a really good rhythm with, with it and I don't have to look at it anymore. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep knitting on this. Maybe you can see the gradient, maybe it is getting lighter, actually. But yeah, really, really enjoying this shawl pattern. Um, and then should we do knitting or crochet next? Let's talk about my newest knitting works in progress and then we'll move on to crochet. So on the topic of using up old stash and using up handspun, this is another skein of yarn that you'll, you'll have seen me spin on my Easter vlogs. This is a two-ply sort of woolen spun, very, very squishy barber pole yarn. Um, spun from merino and south american wool and viscose and neps a blend by spin jones um obviously very colorful and i caked it up because that's what i do especially now that i have my electric ball winder which i do love i just cake everything up because then i can just use it immediately especially with hand spun i find it easier also sometimes to see what the yarn will look like if I have it caked up rather than having to look at the skein. Anyways, caked it up, it was sitting on my desk and then yesterday I was like, I just have to knit something with it and I am so happy at the moment and this sounds really arrogant, I don't mean it that way, but I feel like I am finally spinning the yarns for the projects that I want to knit. So. Now that I'm spinning this kind of yarn, I can basically, you know how many patterns they will use, spin cycle paired with magpie, fi magpie fibers. So you use sort of a barber pole fancy yarn with a still fancy one colored, single colored yarn. And I know lots of people use Zauberball. There are different options of these sort of commercially available yarns, but now I can just spin them. So I am using this and I paired it with this and this is really old stash. This is from, I don't know, six, seven years ago, maybe. And I brought Donna skein to show you. This is very German yarn. This is Finkhof yarn. I bought this when we were in Munich. Um, yeah, I would say about seven years ago, but I think they still exist. And it's German Merino yarn, I believe. Don't quote me, I guess it is. It's German Merino. So if you haven't worked with German Merino before, it is not the soft stuff that you'll get from Australia, New Zealand, South America. This is proper toothy wool, but it's really nice. And I remember that they used to sell this and possibly still do. And like, there's a thin version, there's a thick version. So I looked this up, this, these are 100 gram skeins and the thin version i think it's 300 gram uh, meters per 100 grams so it's about a sport weight and it is quite quite toothy but i do like it and what am i making well i swatched first sort of get an idea i knew i wanted to do some kind of color work so i swatched just to did a swatch first and then i, I searched through my patterns according to the gauge that i got which is a 21 stitch gauge if you're interested and of course, I settled on making another Strange Brew sweater. So the Strange Brew sweater, if you don't know, is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. 
and essentially it gives you all the tools to design your own color wear garments whether they're top down or bottom up or cardigans or jumpers from like baby size to adult male um, size like all the sizes for your entire family essentially and they give you the numbers for I think a fingering weight, a DK weight and an Aaron weight gauge. So what I tend to do is I'll just swatch and then see what gauge sort of is closest to mine. In this case the DK weight I think is 22 stitch gauge in the pattern and mine was 21 so I did some math and yeah look at it. How fun is this? This has me so excited. I only started this last night but as you can tell I have been obsessed with this. So I am as per usual knitting the top down version and I'm just going to do a color work yoke and then the rest of the body will be plain and hopefully I'll have enough yarn. I have three skeins of the sport weight wool but I think it'll be fine. Um, honestly I'm not too too worried and if I run out. I have this in different colors. I just don't want to mix colors, but I will make something work. And yeah, look at it. How fun is this? Um, I've just been obsessively knitting with it um, on this. The middle chart is from the pattern and then I just did some one by one color work, which I think looks so cool with this yarn because the color changes are very rapid. So, um, and I'm dropping stitches, which is not ideal. What I've decided to do is, I like this section the best. I, th I just think it shows the colors off really well. And then obviously I've done this proper color work motif. And now I'm just going to mirror this. So I'm gonna do another nine rows of one by one color work. Um, and then the rest of the sweater will be plain. So I hope that's a good choice and you can see here is where I am changing rows. So this will be in the back. Um, I hope it's going to look cohesive, but I think it will. I think it should be fine. And yeah, I, I love it. I love that I am getting the result of, you know, like the fancy spin cycle yarns and all of those like, you know, Instagrammable things. But what I'm using is yarn that I've spun myself and you know, good old German Merino that I'm sure wasn't very expensive to start with, has been in my stash for ages, so I'm using up stash, I'm using up hand spun, and I'm very excited about this. If you want to see my floats, here are my floats. Nothing particularly interesting to look at, but floats are always fun. And like I said, I am dropping stitches. I actually put this on a larger needle earlier, and I put a needle stopper on, so I'm not sure what happened. But I got to like the beginning of my round and there were just loose stitches everywhere. I don't know what happened, but yeah, that happened. But I managed to pick them all up and save them and we're good to go. I have also finished the last sort of major row of increases. So I'm just going to finish out my color work and then it's straight. And I think there are very, very few increases left. And then we can move on to splitting for the sleeves. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep racing through this until I finish the color work, which is what I usually do. And then I can just, you know, knit plain vanilla body and sleeves. Maybe, maybe I should do like a little bit of this on the sleeves as well. But it'll be very simple meeting, knitting, TV knitting, whatever. Um, modifications I'm making, I added some short rows in the back, in the, um, at the top. Pretty sure the pattern has, oh yeah, definitely the pattern has you do short rows further down the back, but I do enjoy some up here. I do think it is nice to have a couple up here. So I did a couple up here. I will probably also do a bit on the back after the color work, but possibly not as many as the pattern will tell me to. We'll see, who, who knows, who cares? It will be fine. So those are my knitting projects that I've been working on. I haven't done that much work on my lento, so I'm not showing you that. And yeah, I have no idea what else I'm working on. Not, not that much more, I think. I think this is the majority of my whips, which is good. And then, very, very proudly, I'm sort of sitting on it, I brought out a super old whip. This is a crochet whip, if you can't tell. 
I have started working again on my V-stitch blanket. So the sad story why this came out again is that we once again have mice. Well, we have mice. We haven't had seen any traces of mice for a couple of days now, so hopefully we've solved that one. But that caused me to, you know, clean up properly and dig out all the corners that sort of, you know, I have baskets of yarns and not, not, not stash yarns, but just leftover yarns and projects and baskets of blanket whips, essentially. Just, you know, in corners. So I got them all out, cleaned them all out. And I came across this and I decided to work on it again. And I am so happy that I did because look at it. It is now quite sizable. So this is a V-stitch blanket as per usual. I am crocheting my ends in as I go, but I only will snip them off once I'm done to make my life easier. So I have an edge of ends on either side of the blanket because I am doing one row stripes of V-stitch. Um, there's a million V-stitch blanket patterns on Google, YouTube, wherever you get your patterns, if you're interested, but it's very, very simple. Um, and where, oh yeah, down here, can you see this pink stripe? This is where I was when I picked it back up. So I've made a lot of progress. I am quite proud of myself and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm also so excited to get this big whip out of stash. And you'll know I am counting my yarn in versus yarn out this year. And finishing this will give me a significant progress on yarns out of stash. So the yarn, I just keep webbing this in your face because I think it's so beautiful. And like, this is just the perfect yarn, which I'll tell you about in a second. It's the perfect needle size, which is a four millimeter. It's just really drapey and slightly heavier than my usual blankets because this is mostly cotton. Um, but I'm really enjoying the feeling of this. So the yarn that I am using, I have all my colors in this bag and yeah, there is not much left of each color. So I'm just going to keep going until I either run out of yarn or steam, but probably out of yarn first. Um, this is Schreepje's Stone Wash, which is a 78% cotton, 22% acrylic blend, sport weight yarn. Um, I have tons of different colors. Funnily enough, I lost my favorite color. So this is probably the, my favorite, what I, oh, not, not necessarily my favorite one, but this one I really like in this sort of context of colors in my blanket. And I couldn't find it anymore. So I kept working on it and kept convincing myself that it won't matter if this color is missing from my blanket, but I really did like it. So I finally ordered myself another skein. Of course, I found my old skein. Um, but yeah, so this is the yarn I am using and I quite like this yarn. I've used it for a couple of different crochet blankets. Um, but on my most recent blanket that I finished, which was the baby blanket for my friend, uh, which I haven't given to her yet. I haven't even trimmed the ends. Um, it really hurt my hands. And part of why I crochet with a fair bit of acrylic is because of the cotton just aggravating my wrists too much so yeah i worked on the other that was a battenberg blanket a couple of weeks ago months ago and it reaffirmed to me that i don't i can't do it with my with cotton i just ruined my hands but weirdly enough with this stitch it isn't bothering me so i wonder if a i mean the v stitch is very simple and maybe i just relax more this, I can work perfectly with this yarn. So now, knowing that, I am very happy because I can use it again. Whereas with the Battenberg blanket, it was a labor of love. And I honestly, as much as I love crochet, I don't want to ruin my hands with it. I don't want, I used to get tendonitis a lot earlier. I don't know, as a teenager, maybe. Um, I'm not risking that for a crochet blanket, but I am very happy that this is working out and look, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so that is a newfound whip and I am, I definitely do want to finish this soon. I am just, I don't know, I have the mojo for this now, so I think I just want to speed through it and finish it and 
I am quite excited. This is such a spring project as well. I think this will be great to have in spring. It's just like the colors just make me smile and it's sort of, I mean, it has a million colors. Of course it goes with everything, but I think it looks quite nice in our living room, which obviously we have the green feature wall, which our predecessors um, painted. And then the rest of our living room is this like super faint peachy pink, like sort of like this, just a little bit less intense. So I think it will go really nicely. So yeah, um, I bet you weren't expecting that unless you follow me on Instagram. But that is essentially what I have been working on. Um, in terms of life, I mean, I mentioned the mice. That was the most terrifying, weirdest thing that happened recently. Um, we had some over before Christmas. We got rid of them. But I think the issue is that our neighbor has mice. Um, because she had them first. And maybe if she's not getting rid of them they're gonna come back because they're coming they can they're definitely going between the houses um we live in a terraced house so yeah we'll see not loving it especially i mean i think we're on top of it now but we are going on holiday and yeah but we'll get through it um worse things have happened Otherwise, um, in terms of life and house updates, um, my husband has been doing a ton of work in the garden, like retiling and grouting and doing all these very manly jobs, which don't have to be manly, but I'm definitely not doing them. Um, I also don't really care about the state of our grouts. I would have been absolutely fine the way it looked before, but he's been obsessed with that project and has spent many, many hours, which is great because it keeps my son busy as well. He is now moving on slightly. The conversation, I can tell, is moving on to fences. And again, I'm like, I don't care. Like, we have a fence. It is a wooden fence. It is fine. And he's... I I feel like there may be some more, like, fencing action happening, which... Whatever, he's doing it. I don't care. But, yeah, our garden is looking quite nice. Um, so I'm happy about that. Um, I covered the mice. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's just small things. Oh, I should mention Sarah of the It Is A Sarah podcast, which I love a lot. Um, she always inspires me to do all these things. Um, she's been talking about putting away her winter knits and washing them and getting like ready for spring and summer. And I was watching it and I was like, ah, I can feel it in my fingertips. I want to do the same thing. So these past couple of days, I have been sorting through my wardrobe my knitted water of that is i have donated another seven garments i think i donated like nine or ten uh in autumn i've thrown out some more and um, we have this app called olio which is like a free cycling sort of app which i always like passing knitwear on to other people like someone else can be warm in them other um, rather than it just sitting in my wardrobe so i got rid of seven more sweaters that, I mean, some of them, they have seen a lot of love and I have I have worn them, but you know, sometimes you just move on, your style changes, my figure has definitely changed. Um, yeah, so I've passed those on and then I washed the ones that I've been wearing throughout this winter, all of the ones that I got, I got rid of, I haven't worn at all um, in ages, definitely not this year. Um, so I washed my sort of in-use sweaters and they dry really well because our conservatory gets quite warm now. We're going into spring. So I've dried them all and today I packed them all into vacuum bags. I think I only have one sort of pa uh, bag of sweaters left. And then I, in my wardrobe now, they're all the sort of lighter layering pieces. And I, I still wear sweaters. I mean, we're in the UK. But now I have the more seasonal, appropriate ones out, which is nice. Um, I also sorted through my shoes and like I've just been in, in a general like sorting mood, which always feels good. I love decluttering and like I'm not a minimalist, but I like the idea of it. So I've been doing a fair bit of that, which has definitely gotten me into a bit of a spring mood. And I've decided this sweater I think I will leave out because the colors are just so springy. And yeah, you can always use a sweater, so there's that. 
I think that sort of brings me to the end for today, which it's been 30 minutes, so I'm surprised I didn't think I had that much to talk about. Like I said, my son and husband are out, so I'm going to make myself another cup of coffee, do some knitting, try not to fall asleep because that early start this morning was not a good one. Usually I don't struggle getting out of bed reasonably early, but this day has just dragged on forever and ever and yeah. I'm going to try to make the most of it, do some knitting, possibly binge watch some more Grey's Anatomy. Um, so yeah, thank you so much if you joined in today. I hope wherever you are in the world you are healthy, you are happy, you have some fun projects to knit on. Do let me know what you are working on while watching this and I will talk to you very, very soon. Happy knitting! Bye!